Hi everyone, uh, my name is Chris Crooks, I'm the CEO of Rogueware and the uh, lead designer and coder for the game Freeholder, which I have in front of me here. Uh, this is a Let's Play intended primarily just to give the, the early, early alpha testers a little bit of information on how to play the game. I'm going to resist my usual impulse to go on ad nauseum about the little details and strategies, which are basically what made me want to make the game in the first place, but sure, were fairly irrelevant to you because you have no idea even how to play the game. So, let me get into it. Um, you just start by entering your name, say OK, pick a gender, male or female, doesn't make any difference. And then right now I have five classes available uh, in varying levels of functionality. I believe the Ranger is the most functional, then the Gardener. Not everything about uh, husbandry is in, so the rancher isn't fully implemented, but still useful. The artisan is pretty close. The initiate's missing like spells and enchantments, but they still have all of their abilities working. So uh, usually for beginners, I find the ranger or gardener are good choices because um, the ranger lets you get food by hunting more easily, which is always handy, and the gardener lets you get food more easily by farming, which is also handy and getting more food makes the game easier, so let's just go with the Ranger for now. You have a selection of skills at the start. Um, for ease, we'll just go with tracking, which makes hunting easier. So you get your little journal entry for the first year. Now is the time to seize what we can and hold fast. Let the die be cast. Um, supposedly that was a quote by Caesar, but I suspect Really, it was just the historian thought that would be a really epic thing for him to say. On the other hand, it sounds like something he might say. Okay, so here you are on the main screen. What the heck is going on here? Let's just go over the displays really quick. Upper left here, you have the month, Martius, or March. It's Latin. You'll figure it out. Uh, this is the weather. It's fair. Right here you have your wheat quota. Uh, we have zero of the 16 that we need. Basically, at the end of every year, or as to say, at the start of every March, you need to have in your possession 16 units of wheat, or you'll be carted off by the corrupt census taker back into slavery, or something else horrible will happen to you. It's game over. By the same token, just under it, you have the bribe. Uh, here you can see it's 2D, 2 denarius, and it's green with a little X it's checked off meaning that you actually have enough, and indeed if you look over at your money on the right here you'll see you have three denarius and zero cents. Uh, it, you think of it like dollars and cents, it's a hundred cents to the denari, denarius, plural denari, denarii. Uh, so those are, these are your objectives that you need to meet basically at the when, you know, when it's Februarius, February, and you click end turn, these need to be met, or it's game over. So there's your basic objective. Now, in order to meet this objective, your characters need to actually survive the year. So not only do you need to gather this stuff, but your characters' very lives are in your hands. So how do you go about doing this? Well, first of all, most obviously you need food. And if you look just under the money here, you have food, or nutrition. The total nutrition you have available to eat. And right now it's zero, which isn't good. Uh, and also for your other survival consideration, you have heat, which is good during the winter to avoid frostbite, freezing to death. Uh, because I took the ranger, I started with a little bump of firewood. Normally you don't start with any, but every one of the classes starts with a little bun uh, bonus resource. Uh, so in this case, I have some firewood, which is also good for cooking early on. You don't have to waste time gathering firewood for that. So, again, uh, that's those are the main displays up here. Now you can see just under the firewood, there's uh, the actual firewood that I own. On the right side here, as you collect resources, the uh, little tags will come up and you can see what it is. If you want more information, if you left click on the tag, um, it brings up a status display. These are not useful right now. Eventually they'll let you control whether the thing ever comes up into your your flags and uh, whether it's stored in your storehouse, which isn't working right now, so don't worry about that. Uh, right click to dismiss. Uh, Alright, so let's, let's grow some wheat. Why not? These are some farmlands. They have varying properties, but let's not worry about that right now. Uh... I nominate Caius. Let's click him, and when you click him and hold, uh, it puts him on your villa, and you just sort of drag him over to where you want to place him and let go. So here he is on this field, and because he's on a field, he can only take agriculture actions. This whole menu is contextual. It, it gives you actions based on, you know, what tile you're on, and also sometimes what special abilities you have, but it's all contextual, so I can't take any of these sorts of actions on this type of tile. That's why they're great. You see, if I click on agriculture, a couple of actions come up. Plow and sow. I can plow and sow some crops here. 
I can't water because there's nothing here to water, and I can't harvest because there's nothing here to harvest. No ready crops. You'll also notice that plow and sow takes two actions. Um, it's very labor intensive, and harvesting as well. So you have to make sure you plan for having people ready to harvest and don't overuse your actions uh, or like run out of food because you're harvesting wheat at the same time. Just got to plan, that's all. So let's plow and sow, and then a list of crops come up. They have various costs and properties, but you know you can concern yourself with those if you like. Let's click on wheat. Okay, so now you planted some wheat. You can see here Caius has gotten rid of his actions. He used them up planting it. If you want to find out what happened, you can click on this action log here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Normally there would be like some little sound cue. I haven't put it back into the new alpha, but you know, it would be like, bring, bring. And uh, in this case, he rolled a critical for planting the crops, and they'll actually yield more. And in fact, normally they'd yield about 16, but you can see here it's 20. So, you know, good on Caius. I guess I picked the right man for the job. You can see 20 also, if that yield holds, uh, that'll more than fulfill my wheat quota. So if I keep an eye on this field, that's one problem I don't have to worry about. But I still have to worry about food. Hunting is, you know, one of the most, well, if not reliable, one of the com most common ways to try and get food when you don't have any you need it to eat right now. Uh, obviously, you know, you can plant some radishes and you'll have starved to death by the time they actually grow. So I need food now. Well. Because I took the tracking skill with my ranger, you, I can mouse over any tiles that have game, and if they have game, it tells me what the situation is there in terms of the density. And that gives me a clue as to the chances of actually scoring a good kill. Uh, and that's a feature that's really only because I have the ranger with tracking, otherwise it would just be a mystery. I'd have to kind of remember. So, uh, you can see here it says game dense. Uh, there's a thing about predators in the meadow. Eventually you'll have to hunt to keep predator levels down, and you can do it, but the predators aren't actually a threat right now, so it's not anything you need to worry about. Alright, so, let's get some food from this forest. You grab your ranger, click and drag him to the forest, let go. You pick survival, and then hunting. You can see it cost one survival action. Alright, so, I got a deer. Now, sometimes when you hunt, uh, you'll, you'll roll better and get some hides. It's all kind of randomized. Sometimes you'll get some sinew. Uh, the hunting knife can improve your chances with that. A couple of other things. So, I got plenty of food. 24 is actually as much as I need to completely overfeed my whole crew. So, luckily, I'm good on that. Uh, so, why don't I collect a little bit of timber? And, uh... Maybe I'll claim this mountain here. So, let me just explain about claiming really quickly. Uh, basically, you can see these five tiles, including your villa, or the four outside your villa, are lit up, which means they're claimed by you. They're part of your villa officially, legally, you know, as far as Rome is concerned, and you're responsible for a wheat quota based on the amount of arable land that is under your control. Arable land is any land that could theoretically be planted for crops, like cr theoretical cropland. So that includes anything that can be slash and burned to crops if it's not already, to, to farmland if it's not already farmland. Uh, there aren't all of them here right now, but it includes forests, uh, meadows, also ash plains, heathlands, I don't know, I think, I think that's it. Yeah, um, any of those that you claim are going to boost your wheat quota by four. Uh, not for that year, but for the next year, because they reassess at the end, at, you know, at, at each visitation. So you can claim all the land that you want, and you still only have to pay your old wheat quota. But then, once the census taker visits and collects the old quota, it will be reassessed with the new land that you've claimed. However, you should know, certain land is not arable and then won't count against you for your wheat quota. Uh, and there actually are two of them right here. There's a mountain. Mountains aren't arable, and so claiming a mountain doesn't do anything to your wheat quota. Same thing goes for a marsh. You can't farm a marsh. Uh, I mean, the Romans might have had some pretty fancy farming technology, but I don't think they were much in the way of marsh farming, so... You can't farm the marsh, and that means that it doesn't count against you to claim that, and that's also true for a lake, if you find a lake. Uh, mountains and marshes are very, very useful, not least because they don't count against you, so I'm going to claim this mountain. You see the mountains lit up now. Uh, also, I just wanted to show you, you can see this claim land, like, because I haven't claimed it, the only thing I can do on this tile is claim it, and you can see this diamond is multicolored because I can use any type of action to claim it, including, like, you know, an agriculture action. It doesn't matter, so it's a good way to spend extra actions. So I claim this mountain, that's great. You can see here that there's game at this mountain, and so now my ranger has an extra place to hunt 
so I can kind of alternate and not reduce the population of places too much. The game population does replenish over time. It's actually seasonal based on the tile, but you just need to kind of keep an eye on it. Alright, so uh, Lydia hasn't really done much. Um, I was just trying to think of more things that I can do without going into the villa or making anything terribly complicated. I'll have her grab some more wood. Ugh, I wanted her to get ten. And she's not going to get ten. Well, here you go again. Really, I should probably be having her do something else, because if I keep having her do ranger-type skills, she'll turn into a ranger eventually, but, you know, there's still time. Alright, uh, so everything's done, everybody has finished their actions, let's end the turn. Okay, so at the start of every month, except the very first one, is when you have to feed your people. So, it was March, April has begun, I have to assign food for this month. Uh, so basically here on the left you'll see some icons have popped up. The one on the bottom is this herb icon. If you have herbs you can uh, herb them up, feed them some herbs, and it has a specific effect like ginseng helps fight disease, uh, lavender helps with your rolls for actions, but I don't have any herbs so it's not really relevant. Just keep in mind if you have herbs you can click there and it'll cycle through the herbs that you have and you can pick them. Uh, but more importantly on top of it is a smiley type face. And the smiley face is the amount of food that that character is going to eat. So right now it's on normal, just sort of like a slightly smiley blue face. If you left click, it goes up, and if you right click, it goes down. So if I right click, you can see it's a frowny face. This is a meager meal. It reduces the amount of nutrition I need, but uh, you know, but it means that the character's health will go down. If I go with a hearty meal with the green, more smiley face, then the heart, you know, the, the health will go up and normal doesn't do anything. You'll notice if I go really low starvation, uh, I don't have to feed them anything, but there's a fairly decent chance that they'll die this month. You really want to avoid starving people. Anyway, we don't have to do that because we had a good hunt this month. We have two great meat and that will give us all that we need. So let's set everybody to hardy. You can see I need 24 because of that, but two meats, which are 12 here, I have two of them. Click. You can right click to undo, right? Assign, unassign. Uh, you got all the meat that I need, 24, 24, and, you know, you can see here, once you have enough, it changes to green and you can click. Chow time. Right. Food stuffs perish. Alright, yeah, so all food is subject to perish with a few exceptions, like wheat doesn't perish, dried beans don't perish, and certain things like smoked fish, pickled vegetables, but most fresh vegetables and other, and like meats especially, are subject to perish, and every month that you don't eat it, it will just decay and disappear on you. So you have to kind of keep your food stocks continually replenished, uh, because with unless you take special steps to preserve your food, it's all going to decay away on you. So we're good for now. Alright, you'll notice here that the weather is strange to drought. This is interesting, for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, under ordinary circumstances, the particles coming off this wheat would be kind of like an orangey color, meaning that it needed to be watered, but here it's pretty much red, meaning that it needs to be watered twice. One of the things that drought does is it means that all existing crops need to be watered twice to be to count as watered, otherwise they suffer drought damage. And if you don't water them at all, they suffer double drought damage. It's pretty nasty. So I want to take care of that. And Caius, is, Caius is the man. So let's have him water, and then water again so our wheat does not take damage. Protect that wheat. Okay, uh, I would like to plant something else just to get some more food rolling, so I'll have Crux do some beans, which are very handy for a number of reasons, but... Uh, oh, right, and here we go. Remember how I said that during a drought? Uh, unless I didn't, but I think... No, I did in the last tutorial, but I deleted. Okay, well, in a drought, if you plant something, you actually have to water it. Normally it waters automatically, but it just makes your life more difficult because that's freeholder. Alright, everything's watered. That was quite an ordeal. And I don't even really have that much in the way of a chance to get foods. I'm gonna have Lydia claim this marsh, and then I'm gonna have Crux fish there. See, Crux is a ranger, as a specialist at these survival type actions, and so any green action like this, he's actually going to have a slight bonus on the roll. He's better at it than everyone else, and the higher level he is, the more better he becomes. So let's try fishing. Keep your fingers crossed. Oh, that's weak. Crux failed to catch anything. Alright, well, here's the situation where you're like, okay, well, I don't have any food. There's really nothing that I can do. I'm just going to die. Not if you have over normal health. You can see here I have, uh, like, a heart. That's my health. It's got that little purple filling in it. 
I'm pretty sure our artist has changed the color to something better. It's like yellow. But anyway, you can see that I have over normal health. It fills in twice, and then it would be progressively more black from the top down if it was hurt. You'll see in a minute. So if I have over normal health, then I can do something called overwork, where I take an immediate minus to my health to gain more actions. It's one of the great reasons to feed your people. This is not available to you if you're not over normal health. Uh, and I really need Crux to be doing this, so I'm going to send Crux here, even though he doesn't have any actions. And you can see, I have, there's the overwork button is lit up kind of shiny. Now, because I have this health situation, if I click on overwork, I, you can see I immediately lost a bunch of health, but I gained two more actions. Granted, those actions are going to be somewhat lamer, because I'm hurt now. I'm not going to be as good at them, but obviously, if I can get some fish, boosh, not a problem. Neptune smiles on you. Crooks rested a large trout from the murky water. Yeah, marshes aren't as good as lakes for fishing. Just be aware, you tend to get better fish and more fish from lakes. But I don't have a lake, and I didn't starve to death, so I'm not complaining. Crooks has this extra action. Uh, why doesn't he gather some herbs? Ah, ginseng. Yes, this is what I was talking about. Uh, ginseng basically helps you resist disease. It might come in handy if Crooks catches a disease. When you overwork, it also boosts your chance of that happening. Uh, let's see. Nope, he's alright. He's alright, folks! Okay, so here's our available foodstuffs. I have four fish. Uh, it's all going to perish anyway, so I'm just going to eat it all, feed everybody up. Crux needs the health anyway. And uh, I'm going to give him some ginseng just so that he doesn't catch a disease next time around. It's, it's sort of a preventative thing. It boosts his resistance, so it's it's not really effective to, pre to prevent disease unless you give it to them before they catch it. There are other ways to deal with disease once you have it, but ginseng should be kind of given as a supplement, so I'm doing that with him, because his health is low and he's more susceptible to disease. Chow down! Okay, you can see there's a little ginseng marker on his character, so you can remember that you gave it to him. There's still a drought. This is quite stressing. I'm going to need to take four actions to water these crops, or they are going to be hurt. And I still don't have any regular source of food, so I'm going to try to deal with that first, and then I'll deal with the crops. Three fish. Uh, that's enough. I'll have crux water the wheat. I'll have Caius water the beans. And I'm getting bored with this scene, so why don't we survey one of these mystery tiles and see if we can't find something a little more interesting. Uh, to survey, you would just grab the person who has at least two actions, because survey takes two actions. Drag them to the tile of your choice, let's say this one, and then take the survival action survey land. Ah, an open meadow. Uh, it's clay. Well, anyway, not particularly exciting, but we can develop the land or do something with it in a bit. Alright, uh, end the turn. Alright, I do have enough fish, but not enough to do the super feed. I have enough to upfeed one person, so I'm going to make it him, because he's hurting. Skip the ginseng, and chow down. Alright, the drought's finally broken. It's June, and uh, we only got one more month on each of these, so I'll send Caius to work watering away. Alright. I still need to get the food situation under control. I will go to the mountains and try to hunt. Ah, okay. I think I got a mountain goat. Yeah. Um, the meat's not as high quality as the deer. It's worth a bit less. Uh, but your chance for hides is just as good. So, uh, some places are a little bit better for hunting. I think you can get a bear everywhere. Not the ash plains. Um, but, like, forests are tend to give you the best game. Uh, mountains and ash plains are definitely sparser. But, you know, when you're faced with a completely barren forest or a somewhat barren mountains, it's not really, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Alright, so I'd like to do something with this meadow. I could use it for hunting, but I probably should hunt it down and then slash and burn it. That would be the best thing. So I can wait on that because I have food. Uh... What I'd like to do now is actually dig a, a stone pit. I, ha I got that 10 timber, and now that I have that, I can take this action. Dig stone pit, right? Okay. So, 
when you have ten timber and you dig a stone pit at a legal place, you, like, you can't do it in a farmland, you can't do it in a lake, but most places you can. And it affects the amount of pasture space, uh, if it's a pasture type land. Now I can take this action. Gather stone. See? So once you dig that pit, you can gather stone. Now there is a set amount of stone in a tile, and once you mine it all away, you have to go dig another stone pit somewhere else. Um, artisans have an ability where they can see how much stone is left, and also for like marble and uh, ores later on. Uh, yeah, but so now that I dug a stone pit there, I have a source of stone which will be useful for crafting, which I will get into momentarily if I have time. Uh, what am I at now? Uh, 20 minutes. How about that? Uh, try to keep to lean 30 for the start here. Uh, okay, so uh, that's all that. Uh, I'll survey that. I haven't claimed it, so I can't do that there. I don't want to slash and burn that. Well, this might be a good time to just briefly show you cooking, because it's handy for you to play the game. I don't really want to go into all the niceties, but the point is, with cooking, you can take a good, uh, like a, a food, and then preserve it for a turn. So rather than decaying, it'll, it'll keep, and then you can eat it next turn before it goes bad. Uh, it, it's just a way of managing your food. And the range of source is extra firewood, and I have a piece of meat here, and uh, maybe I can get a little bit of extra fish before I visit the kitchen. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I can uh, smoke that fish. Or, I mean, cook that fish. Okay, so to go to the kitchen, I'm just going to keep it simple, right? You drag your guy over your villa tile. Bottom left here is the kulina. That's the kitchen. Click there, right? Click on open cookbook. Okay. You click on soup. It's the only thing you can make right now. That's all we're going to worry about. You have to choose a food. So click on raw food, and then we're going to make fish soup. So click the fish, right? You go to firewood. We have firewood, so it activates. And now we have everything we need, so it turned into a check mark. Now, if you had salt, you could add it. Salt does a number of very interesting things. It adds two to the nutrition, which is handy on its own, but it also makes it keep for even another turn. So regular soup keeps for one month, you know, and super salted soup keeps for two months. Uh, obviously, this whole thing is incredibly abstract. The idea of soup keeping for even a month on its own is ridiculous beyond belief, but <clears throat> it's a game, right? Right? <clears throat> so, let's make the fish soup. It doesn't show up on your uh, resources because it's really only useful on the food screen anyway. Uh, you can't really sell it either. So, let's see. That's everything for that turn. End turn. Alright, so you can see my soup is here and it's, deno it's uh, denoted as fresh, which lets me know that I don't have to eat it this turn. Uh, I can wait, and I will wait, that was the whole point. Instead, I will eat both of these meats giving myself 20, which is not enough to get more than one boost, and of course I'll give it to my main again, so let's eat that. See, and my soup kept, I still have 7 nutrition to start me off on this turn, and I can combine it with this beans, with this beans, that's not English, it's nearly English. Okay, now you can see here that these are at zero. When any crop is at zero, it's harvestable, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you want to harvest it. If you're starving, yes, you want to harvest it. If you're not, you may want to let it overgrow. You can let crops grow for one extra month past their harvest time, and they will gain extra yield. Uh, sometimes it's absolutely necessary if you're trying to get a little bit more wheat to meet the quota, uh, or you want a little bit more food. Now, I'm feeling lazy, and I'm tired of hunting, and I want to let these places regenerate a little bit, so I'm going to take the beans now. Plus, I don't want to have to spend a bunch of actions all at once and have to water the beans and then harvest them later, blah, blah, blah. So I'll get Caius, uh, Caius to pull the beans right now. Uh, harvest. All right, so Caius tolls ceaselessly to harvest the beans. Tolls. Toils. <clears throat> Can't read my own writing. Just to say my own typing. Okay. Caius toils ceaselessly and harvests the beans. All right, I have 16 beans. Those beans are worth two nutrition each, and lucky, lucky me, they do not perish. So I, I can kind of rely on them a little bit more. But I still need to water this wheat, and I'm going to have Crux do it, because I don't care what he does. Alright, now I don't have to worry about foodstuffs, so I'm going to survey another tile. How about this one for symmetry? Uh, another marsh. How dull! I don't really want Lydia to claim anything. What shall I do? I guess I'll have her gather some reed. It's mostly used for building. 
We're not really going to go into it right now. There's all kinds of fun stuff that you can gather and use. Alright, so first I'm going to use my... Now you can see the fish soup is molding, right? So that means I got to eat it. And I'm going to eat it now. That's 7. Plus uh, up to 15 from those beans. Eating it up. Alright, now you can see there's a plus on the wheat. That means that it's been overgrown. It's as good as it's going to get. The yield's been bumped up to 23, which is wondrous. Caius, you know what to do. Yep. Fantastic. So you can see I'm good on my bribe. I'm good on my wheat. I'm good for this year. All I really got to do now is survive, and I'll get to the next year. I probably should go into the market, but like I said, I'm trying to keep this to a lean 30, and this at least gives you the basics of survival, so we should go into firewood and heating and so forth. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit more firewood from here. Uh, I guess I need to get some more food going. Don't need any more wheat. I'll do some... I'll do some... Cabbage. Yeah! Cabbage takes a while to grow, but it gives you so much food. The only problem is it ro uh, it rots really quickly. If you have a mat way to like pickle it, it's insane. Uh, there is no way to pickle it right now, so don't go looking for one. It, it, I can put it in quickly if people are like, I demand pickling, you know. <laughs> I, frankly, I hope you do demand pickling. I mean, I love the idea, but uh, it, it would be relatively quick to implement in any case. Alright, I wanted to slash and burn this, so I'm going to claim it now. Ah! <clears throat> you can see that despite my wishes, Crux has caught a, co a cold, actually. He's become sick. So you can see his health was reduced down to this level, simply because he's sick. It's kind of locked there. Uh, it can, I can push it up one level with feeding, but it will always collapse back down to that, unless he actually gets over the disease. Uh, I don't really have that many beans. I need to get more food to feed everybody. Alright, well, you know, I'm actually wondering if that cabbage was planted too late. I thought August would be fine, but... Anyway, I need some food fast, so I think radishes are called for. Radishes grow very quickly and give you a decent chunk of food. They're not worth very much to sell and they go bad quickly, so they're really only an emergency crop. And they also deplete the soil nutrition really fast, so you have to kind of be careful about using them. But they're about as fast of an emergency crop as one has, at least right now. And I need some food for the moment. That place is probably fished out. I'm going to claim this and try fishing here. Yeah, there we go. That's the food I need. could probably even get away with cooking one of them. I'll have Gaius do it if I'm lucky enough to get more. Nope. Alright, why don't you get some herbs from this meadow before I burn it all to the ground. Ah, some garlic. Uh, it'll, this is most useful for selling right now. It's good with wounds, but since there's no combat at the moment, how the hell are you going to get wounded? It, hell, if you can get wounded, it, like the game will become sentient on its own. I don't even know. <laughs> Alright. Sorry about that. Another drought? Man, this is brutal. I love it. My weather system is working out perfectly. I always thought it was too easy. I made some tweaks, and now I'm just dealing with drought at every, t every, every turn. Okay. I'm gonna eat that fish. I'm gonna eat all that fish. Leave the beans. And, oh, as a note, this is a glitch. The wheat should not be here. Don't touch it. Don't use it. You're not supposed to be able to eat it. I'm messing with some of the code for the food feeding screen and I'm reclassifying some stuff and the wheat should not be here. It's not worth any food, uh, nutrition, don't eat it, etc. Okay, this drought is killing me! Hmm. Yeah, I don't even know what Lydia's gonna end up doing. I'll just... I'm hoping I can get to promotion before this is over. God, Caius, it's the most boring job in the world. Water the fields! Water the fields, yes! Yes, this is your job, this is good for nothing but watering the fields. Well, you know, maybe it'll get easier for him. Let's try fishing again. Okay, this ain't working out so good. 
foodstuffs. I need foodstuffs. Let's try hunting in this meadow. Let's try hunting again in this meadow. Ooh. A little short on the food front. Uh, let's go back to fishing. I'll have Caius take the hit. Overwork, survival, fishing. There we go. Uh, I might just point out that when your character is t nearly maxed out like that, uh, the only ones who can get maxed out are like gladiators with this particular skill, but when you're nearly maxed like that, um, it's really efficient to overwork. You can see you actually don't even... You could overwork twice in a row if you needed to. Uh, not in the same turn, but from one month to the next without needing to recover, although I guess theoretically that'd be possible if you were down to normal and then fed yourself up. Anyway, you get the idea. So I got some fish, and I guess I'm going to have him gather some more herbs, just because I can. A bit more ginseng. Alright, I'm going to eat this fish. Yeah. Ugh, <sighs> alright. This drought is everlasting. I'm going to take these radishes because I'm too lazy to water them. Now you can see, I just got an outrageous amount of food. But these radishes will not last long, as you will see. And I've got to protect these stupid cabbages, so I'm going to water them. Water them good. Um, gather some more stone. Clink. I just like that sound. Kudos to the sound dude who made that. I have no idea who it was. It's like some freeware sound. Uh, da, 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 da. Nothing else to claim. Guess I'll try to get a bit more timber. Alright, finally. Winter has arrived. Winter is no longer coming. Alright, so you'll notice now. Uh, let me first get the food situation sorted. Eat as many radishes as I can. You can see I'm losing 12 radishes this month. I mean, that's like half of what I have. So, you know, eat up. You, you can cook some of them into soup. And like I said, when I put pickling in there, you could pickle some of them. But, you know. Oh, for refrigeration. And actually, it's worth pointing out that if you do get to... If you get sub-zero temperature, your food does not spoil. It is a form of refrigeration. But the other thing I wanted to mention is you see available heating is now, like, stuff's happening here. There's a needed and supplied. Normally you need uh, two heat per person uh, in the winter in order to prevent frostbite. If it's sub-zero, you need three per person. You can see here, uh, 20 firewood I have. Started with 18 or, like, 12. I gathered some more. 20, they're worth one heat each. I can burn them. I can not burn them. They, it automatically assigns firewood if you have it, because really, not taking firewood would be nearly insane. That is to say, not heating your people would be nearly insane. Um, there's charcoal, which you can get, and really there's no other purpose than heating right now. Eventually you would use it for um, like smelting and forging, stuff that needed heat that you couldn't generate with just regular firewood. And then the last is blood moss, which is a reagent you can find in forests during uh, the fall. Uh, and you can burn it for extreme heat. You also use it for spells and stuff. You can find it and you can use it. Uh, not sure why you'd want to. So, I accept, like, you know, desperation. The whole reason that you have it on hand is just in case you have no firewood and it's sub zero. There you go. Actually, now that I think about it, I may have also changed Blizzard to increase the heating requirement. I'll have to check. Alright, so anyway, we have the firewood. We have everything we need. Let's go. And you can see, lost a bunch of radishes. Okay, so now in the winter you'll notice uh, just a few things have changed besides the snow. Uh, here you can see, rather than a water, sort of water drops, there's just a frost coming off of the cabbage. Well, first of all, I shouldn't be growing cabbages in the winter. They're going to take some kind of hit from the frost, and maybe I'll be able to harvest what's left next month. But uh, anything other than parsnips and winter wheat, when I finally put it in, uh, will have this frost coming off of it. So uh, that means that you can't water it, nor would you need to water it, as the ground is frozen and nothing would happen. Uh, it's in winter mode. Now if you had something like parsnips planted, which can go through the winter without any trouble, it's wonderful, because you don't have to water them at all. You just leave them alone, and no matter how bad the weather gets, they'll be fine. I mean, they would be possibly damaged by a blizzard. Although really, I don't think so. I mean, parsnips are roots. <clears throat> so if they are damageable by a blizzard, I may want to consider changing that. Okay, uh, 
so I just wanted to quickly get through the rest of this year, but you get the idea. You gotta collect all of this stuff and have it ready, and then etc. Let me just get through this year. I'll go as fast as I can. I wanna survey some more though. The winter is a great time to catch up on um, projects and other things that you couldn't do while you were too busy, you know, working the crops and so forth. Particularly if you manage to store up a nice stock of food that'll last you through the winter, you can spend a lot of time like crafting and catching up on doing uh, the minor tasks you need to really be efficient next year. Uh, you can do a lot of goods processing and so forth during the winter. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that hunting and fishing are automatically harder during the winter. The game's hibernating, the fish are under ice, um, so all of those actions take a penalty. Yet another reason why it's great to lay in a supply of... Ah, see that? I found a marsh, and uh, a little text popped up saying marsh grass clump, and I inherited a bunch of reed. Occasionally when you survey tiles, there may be a bonus hidden there, like some amount of resources or something, a little pile of rocks or, you know, some spare firewood. Uh, and if you find it, you'll just collect it up and gather it automatically as part of the survey. It's just kind of like a nice uh, way to... Uh, a nice little dice roll added to surveying to make things more interesting. And then you can also find tiles that have properties that last, like when you claim them. Uh, maybe I'll find one if I'm lucky. I'll keep surveying, see if I can get one. Alright, you can see my radish, radish perishing is getting not quite so bad, but I'm trying to go lean on this stuff, so... I'm actually gonna pull off one each on Lydia in order to save my radishes. <clears throat> Ugh. Alright, well, the cabbages were talked about 8 off. Went from 25 to 17, but that's still plenty for my purposes, so let's have Caius do it. 17 cabbages. I'm good good on food for the winter for sure. Um, I don't really want her to do that. She's just going to end up being a ranger again, I bet. I don't know what the other one is. Oh, Nightshade. Yeah, I forgot to mention, I was just gathering reagents with the Ash Plane. Reagents. <clears throat> the Ash Plane has a salt. It's a great place to get salt, which is used for all kinds of things. It sells for a lot of money. You can use it in cooking. Sulfur is mostly used just for selling right now. It's for spells and a few crafting things. And there's Nightshade. This is used as a poison later on. Like, agents make use of it. Right now it just sells for a lot of money. Very handy. Uh, you don't, you know, you can't take sulfur or nightshade with your character. It would just kill them, which is not probably your goal. You know, if there's a demand that I people, <laughs> if you clamor for, you know, we demand our characters be able to eat deadly nightshade, then you know maybe I'll put it in. <laughs> All right, I'm good on food. Jesus, I'm really good on food. I'm just going to keep surveying, looking for one of these things so I can show you. Ah, perfect. Here's one right now. Amazing how that works out. Uh, this is a forest. And uh, you can see it's shiny with little glowy particles. And on the text over, it says recent fire in square brackets. That means that there's something special about this tile. In this case, there was a recent fire. So the claiming the glimmering dots mean that if I claim this tile, I'll get whatever bonus is there. In this case, the recent fire bonus. So I'll take Lydia and claim it and see what happens. Ah, you see? <clears throat> Under the events tab, it shows these because it's fairly significant when they happen. Lydia claims the forest and carefully collects the dried out and charred wood from the fire. So I inherited quite a bit of firewood and... I don't know why I say inherit. Uh, from what? The earth? Mother Earth left for me uh, some firewood and for charcoal. So, you can find charcoal occasionally in nature if you're very lucky. And that's just, that's just great. It's lovely, isn't it? Nature. Alright, end turn. Ah, okay. This is kind of effed, but it still works. The class change. Uh, Gaius has done enough stuff to promote. He basically did mostly agriculture, but it appears that I gave him enough magic actions that he could be an initiate instead, which is much more badass. And since we're getting towards the end here, I have so many reason not to take the initiate, so here we go. Uh, and I'll give him... Claromancy. Not really exactly important what that is uh, right now. Just letting you know. 
Ah, and furthermore, I can see that the text has remained. Well, you can clear it by doing that, but that's a glitch I should take a look at. Alright, now look at Caius. Look at him. Look how fancy he is. He's got, like, a cape and some orange and blue, like, pants. And he's ready to cast a spell. Although, in this case, he actually can't cast a spell. He can take an extra magic action, which, in this case, is limited entirely to gathering herbs. Of course, you could use it for a wild, like, claiming or processing goods or something. Uh, and I gave him Claromancy. You can see it here. Uh, the character art is effed. But it all works. Like, you can equip everything just fine. But the, the way it processes the sprites is befuddling. I haven't quite figured it all out yet. Some of it works. Uh, anyway. They even list some stuff here. Oh, lord. So, Caius is promoted. Good for him. And we have all everything we need. I'm just going to keep going. Alright, so, if you get through Februarius, and you can see it took my wheat supply, and the bribe has been taken out of here, and uh, the path of history shifts ever so slightly, you have survived another year. Well done! Take stock for a moment and steal yourself for the challenges ahead. Fortuna Secunda began year two. And so, you get a fun new journal entry, and you let the die be cast. And then you move on to another year. You'll notice that the bribe has doubled in size. I think it increases by 2D every year. I haven't really exactly worked out how it scales. There may be ways to affect that as well. But the whole point is it's almost like a timer for the game. Because you have to deal with this guy at a certain point. And when the bribe becomes like outrageously huge, you pretty much have to make a move. So it's a built-in timer to the game. As for the weak quota, you can see it's jumped up ridiculously. Uh, because I claimed so much land, although not all of it, as I said, was arable. So that's really the basics. Um, there's a lot more of, like, villa actions, you can process goods, and there's a whole thing about the market, but, you know, this should give you enough to chew on, and, uh, although I don't think I mentioned it, you saw me scrolling around, and you probably were like, how on earth does he do that? Uh, you have to use the arrow keys or WASD right now. It's gonna be a drag, a dragging interface, uh, but... Right now it isn't, so enjoy, and give me all the bugs and feedback you can, and if you have ideas for concepts that you want to put in, anything, resources, it really doesn't matter, it's all pretty open right now, and uh, we look forward to hearing what you have to say about it. So, uh, this is Chris Crooks, thanks very much, and I'll see you for the next Let's Play of the Freeholder Alpha.